Let you know if they are worth buying. If it, this stupid car and it's stupid dinger. Oh, ah. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today, we're back at it on the Grand Marquis. But first things first, I gotta get this thing up to the shop. Well, I don't have to, but I want to. And, uh, yeah, it ain't running right. So we're gonna get it up there, take a look at it, see what we can do. Yeah, this thing's definitely down a hole. On the plus side, it sounds like it's got a big cam. If you guys saw the last video where we took this thing off roading and uh, you know had some fun with it, you also saw that part way through I was doing a water crossing and this thing started misfiring, running really bad. Checked it out real quick, found that I had some water down in the hole, and yada yada yada. Ended up putting the coil on it, and that fixed it for a couple hours. Basically, once that video ended and I was on my drive home, the thing developed another misfire and started running just like it did before. So, I'm guessing that this thing probably has another coil that crapped the bed. For those of you that didn't see the last video, I figured I'd kind of show you a quick way that you could figure out if you have a bad coil causing a misfire without any scan tools, without anything fancy to hook up to the car. I'm going to dig into this thing, see what I can find, and kind of do maybe a product review? I don't know. I figured I'd try something out and worst case, they don't work and I wasted a little bit of money. but. Boy, we'll have some fun in the meantime, right? Now, the reason I say I'm going to try something out or maybe waste some money is I went ahead and went online, and if you have one of these Crown Vicks, you've probably looked at these and debated whether you should or shouldn't do it. Now, never heard of this brand. I did do some Googling and whatnot, and, you know, found some decent reviews. I picked up some of the super cheap eBay, Amazon coils for this thing. Now, to these guys' credit, it comes in a pretty nice box. Don't know if that'll make a difference, but they don't look bad. I guess they got that going for them. So we're going to slam these things in there, see if this takes care of my problem, and also see if these things are worth the money. Now when I say cheap, I mean cheap. You can pick up a whole set of these things for $30, $40 on eBay. I went even cheaper than that. I found these on eBay as an open box deal for $26 with free shipping. Weird. Now if you did watch the last video, you'll probably remember we did run into town quick and pick up one new coil for the car. And that one coil alone, I want to say, was $21, $22 with tax and everything. And that was one of the cheaper lines that the parts store carries. Now, I'm not typically a big fan of putting, you know, cheap stuff like this on. Cheap coils, cheap electronics. But 
I've seen this kind of stuff all over the place and it has my curiosity peaked. So, why not? $26. I paid almost that for one coil. <laughs> anyway, so the basic idea here, if you think you have a bad coil, is with this thing running, you can go through and unplug one coil at a time and see if it makes a difference how the car runs. If it doesn't make any difference, you probably got an issue there. If it starts running funkier and stumbling and stuff, well, that one was probably working. Can't probably check this catch can while I'm in here. Not bad. That would have all been going down my intake and getting burnt. Good enough. Kind of working through lunch here. Man, I haven't had combos in freaking years. I forgot how good these things are. Ah, time to let the line roar. All right, let's try this out. Yeah, that one's working. Oh, ah. Well, doesn't seem to make too much difference there. Oh, maybe it did. Is that all that was wrong with it? Well, either way, check them all. Boy, that is just something, isn't it? Well, now I feel like an idiot for finding that coil unplugged. I'm still gonna go ahead and put those other coils in. At least I know I have eight good ones if those things end up being trash. But I figure I can run them for a while, as long as I can anyway. Give you a good honest review, let you know if they are worth buying. This stupid car and its stupid dinger. Let you know if uh, it's just a scam and see how long they hold up. Maybe come back to you after a while and give you an honest review of them. Anyway, I'm gonna get the uh, scan tool going here and show you exactly what I'm hearing, if that makes sense. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm looking for and what I'm hearing with this car uh, when I'm unplugging those coils to tell if they're working or not. So you'll get a visual So then you'll get a visual on here and, you know, a good idea why it's nice to use a scan tool, but a visual representation of what I'm listening for. So let's fire this thing back up and see what we can see. So here you can see I'm pretty well even across the board as far as the power balance test goes. I'm not dropping any cylinders or anything like that. It tells me I'm not currently misfiring. Now I'll unplug one of these coils and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. All right, I'm just gonna unplug the one with the uh, finicky connector and let's see what that does. Oh, can you tell which one? Let's see if it goes away. Ah, see how the trace line, it's kind of hard to see. The little blue trace line right there goes back up goes back down well that kind of sucks that all that is is just a connector and uh, you know I guess whatever it gave me a reason to drive my daughter's car which is if you saw my 
video right before this one doing a tune-up on a GM 3800 might as well go check that out and uh, but yeah that's her new car I've been working on that a little bit and driving it this last week or so while this thing's been down so I guess it's a win-win either way I am gonna dive in here and start changing out these coils and yeah I mean that's that's as simple as it is basically if you find a coil that isn't changing anything the note of the engine the rpms don't change typically that's your guy you can try flip-flopping them to a different cylinder and if it follows to that cylinder then it's definitely a coil if it doesn't follow and it's still missing on that same cylinder then you might have more issues could be an injector could be something internal could be a number of different things that's a whole different diagnostic path to go down but the reason I did this is because I know that these 4.6 engines are super common, super duper common for having coil issues. And a lot of you guys are in the same boat and you don't have a scan tool or any way to diagnose it yourself. That's a super easy way to do it. That's uh, honestly, I'm a mechanic. You can see I'm currently in the shop right now and I do this stuff every day and that is typically my quick and dirty go-to just like a parking lot test to see if it's a coil, if it's something more kind of game plan to diagnostic. So I hope that helps you guys out. Like I said, I'm gonna dive in here, start changing these coils out and cross my fingers that all eight of those are good. So let's get after it. There's the one new one. Even though these things are technically still working, look at the shape of these boots. You can see there's still moisture down in those holes. Yeah, they are pretty rough. These are original coils with a hundred and whatever, hundred and whatever thousand miles this thing has on it, other than this one from the last video. But yeah, regardless, they're due. I'm gonna go through and blow these holes out again anyway, just cause I'm seeing a little bit of moisture on a few of these. Might as well. bit in the boot and then on these I'm actually going to put a little bit around the edge of the outside of the boot to just try and keep any moisture or anything out in the future. There we go. A little bit there, a little bit there. Fit well. All right. Zip 
these guys back in and then do the other side. throw in the toolbox, but these I'm going to put on the shelf at home. As long as I got the scan tool out and hooked up, I'm going to go through and clear the codes. I'm tired of looking at this check engine light. Of course, it had a bunch of coil and misfire codes. There we go. All clear. Mm. much more power. Speed bump. Just kidding. This thing, uh, it basically just runs like it should. You know, all these claims of like more power and better fuel efficiency and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't buy any of it. Uh, if it just runs like it should, then sure. Yeah, I'm happy with it. And so far, it runs like it should. Well, overall, you know, they work. So that's a plus. They, uh, you know, they fit in the hole. They bolted in everything there. Yeah, that worked. Uh, the only gripe I had is that the connectors didn't fit great. And... You know, some of them did not want to snap in, which was kind of the problem I was having before. Uh, I got most of them to snap in other than two. I don't know if it's just the connector. I don't know if it's maybe the, you know, coil itself. Either way, uh, you know, they're working, they're holding on. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how they go in the long run. Let me know, and uh, yeah, 
I guess that'll do it. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.